In your everyday life, you might not make the correlation that decluttering and saving money actually can go hand in hand, but I've been going through a thing lately that I'm gonna share with you, and I just had to share these seven crucial ways they actually are related and how it can help save you money. I am in the middle of a 12 week whole house declutter project. We have been reading the 12 week year together as a channel. Many of you are participating with your own goals. And the concept of the book is to squeeze in what you would normally squeeze in 12 months and condense it down to 12 weeks and get it done in 12 weeks instead. Decluttering my house has been something that has been weighing on me in so many ways and I'm finally tackling it and I am in full swing declutter slash de-owning. I learned the term de-owning from minimalist Joshua Becker and it's been very helpful because instead of just moving things, the same things over and over again to different locations in the house, trying to make it look better, de-owning is physically removing, donating, trashing, getting those items out of the house and that has made all the difference for me. This channel is all about frugal living, budgeting, saving money, really making the most of your resources, right? And so the decluttering process and saving money has never been more clear. The correlation has never been more clear than during this process. The first crucial way I realized that this goes together is uh, number one, I actually found money, <laughs> not metaphorically, not, you know, I actually found money. So during this declutter process, I have found change. I have put them in my son's piggy bank. We are going to make the most of that. I have found gift cards. Oh, you guys, I found gift cards that I never used, that I misplaced, didn't even know was in this house somewhere. I actually found money to spend. So that's one clear, obvious, literal way. Number two, when you're doing this process and you see how much you have, you will feel like you have everything and more. I'm going to insert a clip right now of what happened when I started decluttering my closets. You see all this stuff here? This used to be money, right? This used to be money spent. And now it is all over my home. And instead of adding value to our daily experiences, it's actually causing more harm than good because we don't use these things often anymore. Half this stuff didn't even realize we had. When you're going through the decluttering process, if you've ever been feeling like you are going without or you don't have enough, you will be filled <laughs> and possibly overwhelmed with the reality that you actually have quite a bit more than you thought and you will feel abundant and less likely to want to go out and spend a ton more when you realize how much you truly have. You actually have more than you thought. Number three, no storage fees. Back when I was in college, I went to college in Florida. So I had rented out a storage unit to be used over the summers when I came home for uh, summer, etc. And I was paying a, a little pretty penny to keep my stuff in a storage unit. One of the times when I came back, I didn't even visit the storage unit for months. It's just, it, it turned out to be things that I didn't even really need, want, use, love anymore. And I just realized that there's a lot of people out there that actually don't think that their home can hold all their stuff. So they're paying for storage. Are you a person that pays for storage? Have you ever paid for storage? This might be an indicator that maybe you have too many things or, you know, it, it could be worthwhile, but a lot of time, Oh, you've seen those those shows, right? Where people just go bid on the storage locker spaces and get rid of it because people have abandoned them. They no longer use them. I would rather do anything, spend my money on anything else than paying to store more things that I'm not going to use. I know that there might be some temporary times during a move, during a certain life situation 
that it's crucial. But if you're always paying for storage for stuff that you don't use, look at, even think about anymore, just might be something to consider so that you don't spend that money on things you don't care about. Number four, by doing a full declutter, de-owning project, you can save money on storage tools. Now, I know that a lot of people love to go to container stores and the Dollar Tree and get the organizational stuff. And I think that that is smart for the things that you regularly use so that things are organized. However, when things start going into bins, you're buying tons of bins and you're labeling them and you have to label them and store them in a place that you're not gonna use that often. Do you really need them? It's just something to consider. Cause I, even when I started this project, I had people saying like, oh, you should buy this, you should buy this, you should buy this to store. I don't wanna do that. My philosophy is I wanna have less so I don't have to spend money to store things that I'm not gonna look at 90% of the year. Christmas decorations, sure, have a storage bin for that, but if you have 50 storage bins for that, you know, and you don't even use them all, that might be something to consider. Um, I wanna spend less on organizational tools. There's some that are appropriate, but I don't wanna overspend on organizational tools. That just tells me I have too much stuff. Number five, less money spent on cleaning products and less time cleaning. When I have a decluttered home, it is so much easier to run the vacuum. It's so much easier to dust. You might not need to buy as many things to keep the home clean. And on top of that, the time that you could save cleaning less is going to make your life so much better. Think about what you'd probably rather be doing than spending your time cleaning. Or even me, as a person with a full-time job and an entrepreneur, I could be making videos, which could be making me money, instead of spending time doing tedious cleaning. Cleaning's necessary, you guys, but I don't wanna spend all my time doing it. Same thing with my grocery shopping. That's why I do it once a week, and that's why I do grocery pickup now. I don't wanna spend my time doing that. Number six, when you declutter and de-own, It'll help you save money by not having to replace the things you can't find. Here's a small example. It was my boss's birthday not too long ago and I like to basically balloon bomb her office. Like when she walked into her office, there were balloons everywhere. There was a disco going on. We had Whitney Houston playing her favorite song, I wanna dance with somebody. And we had to blow up those balloons. Now I have asthma, so I have a device that blows up balloons much quicker so I don't have to half die while I'm trying to blow up these balloons, but I couldn't find it. I didn't know where it was. And I knew I had a manual one and I had an electric one. Didn't know where either of them were. We were at the Dollar Tree getting the balloons and I decided to get another one to save us time. Turns out those do not work well at all. So. When we're talking about Dollar Tree fines and bad Dollar Tree fines, don't get the thing to blow up the balloons. It was terrible, it did not work, and I ended up having to blow up everything myself anyway. But if you do wanna know some of the good fines that I have found at the Dollar Tree, I'll leave it on the end screen for you to check out because there are some great things that I have found there, but that one was not one of them. But when you don't know where things are, you might be inclined to buy things again because you don't even know where the thing is that you need is stored. Like when there's so much clutter, when you have junk drawers, when you have closets overflowing, believe me, uh, it, it, it's just like, you're gonna spend money on things that you already have because you didn't know where you even put it. I hope you don't live like that, but listen, I have. I currently have been until now. Number seven in this, I believe, is the most important and the biggest point of this video. When you have taken the hours and days and weeks and months to declutter your home, you are going to be much more mindful of what you bring into the house now because where are you going to put it? I am very clear <laughs> in all of my heart, 
mind and soul that I never want to go through this again. And so I've talked with Caden about this. We've, we've discussed it. We want to be very mindful of what we bring into the home and where we put it so that we don't get into this predicament again. So when you're thinking about like just going window shopping and, and then you, like the other day I was thinking, oh, I'm by myself. I'm going to go to Target or Home Goods and just walk around and see what they have. Why? I don't need anything. And where am I going to put it? And then I have to take care of it. And then I'm going to have to transport it to another room when I'm tired of it there. You know what I mean? Like there's just, you've got to have intention and purpose with the things that you spend on a for like saving money purposes, but also managing the inventory later is a nightmare, especially if it's not something you're going to use often, or you actually just love it lights you up. Like how long is this joy going to even last once it gets into the house? So being mindful after a project like this is going to save me tons of money because you have to ask yourself, do I want to manage this? Is this worth finding space for? And often the answer is no. If the answer is yes, then you find a spot for it and you make it work. But I'm not doing this to myself again. And this is going to save me tons knowing I'm not going to want to go through this process. Thinking about how many hours I'm spending on this project really fries my behind because I could be doing so many more things with my time. I'm glad I'm doing it. It's changing my life. We feel like we can breathe better now. I know where everything is. It's making us so happy and joyful, but I'm a little annoyed that I didn't do this sooner or manage it better the first time around so that we didn't have to go through this at all and we could have been living like this the whole time. You know what I'm saying? If you like this idea of saving money by de-owning and decluttering, type in the comments, I do. And make that commitment to start doing a little decluttering here and there to improve your life. You will not regret it. All right, so if you're inspired by this video, I'm going to leave an interview with Joshua Becker here in case you're interested. I'm going to leave a de-owning video right here to inspire you more. I'm gonna leave my Dollar Tree video here. Also, if any of these are interesting to you, watch them next so you can enjoy more talk about decluttering, de-owning, frugal living, minimalism, saving money. It's your choice what to watch next. Have a great week, K-Squad. Don't forget to hit subscribe.